When I was selected for the United States ski team, I was the third ranked one-legged woman in the United States of America, which was good because they only took three one-legged women on the team. So I just barely squeaked on. I had no thoughts of winning a medal. I was just so excited to be representing my country, to have my team jacket and my ticket to Innsbruck, Austria to compete. So you can imagine my surprise when I got there and I went down the first run of the slalom race, that's the really tight turns around the red and blue poles, I got to the bottom and they posted the times and my time was number one in the entire world. But it takes, it takes two runs to win a medal. So I had to go back up to the top and wait my turn. And they set a whole new course. You never ski the same course twice. So I'm waiting my turn, other women are going down, and I hear that there's a dangerous spot on the course, that women are crashing. One woman was even taken off in an ambulance to the hospital. So I'm waiting at the top and thinking, no heroics, I just have to have a good solid run. I just have to stay standing and I can win the gold. So I get in the starting gate and the race officials counting down, five, four, three, two, one. I break the timing wand, I'm hitting the poles, I'm going down, I get to where I can see the finish line and I think, I've made it, I'm gonna win. What happens the minute you think all your problems are over? I hit the ice, my foot started to wobble, I couldn't hold on and wham, I was sitting on my rear end in the snow, I went from number one in the world to sitting in the snow, I was so miserable. I just wanted to crawl away, you know, not to have to face my teammates, my sponsors, my family. But my, my physical reflexes took over. Even though my mind didn't feel like it, my hands grabbed my equipment, got over the finish line, and when the dust cleared, I was still in third place. All the top women who were skiing on one leg, they all had the same problem, went down and got up. So I was still in the running. I got to stand on the winner's podium with the U.S. flag waving behind me got the metal put around me and flowers, my mother sobbing in the snow. But it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't gotten up and finished the race. I went on, I finished third and won another bronze in the giant slalom race, which is bigger turns. I placed seventh in the downhill race where you go 65, 75 miles an hour on one leg down the hill. You gotta love it. So I won the silver medal that I'm wearing for overall performance in all three races. But it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't finished all three races. You know, I was thinking about the woman who won that race where everybody fell down, and I thought, I was the better slalom skier than she was. When we were all standing up, I had the fastest time. When everybody fell down, she did better because she couldn't ski faster, is what I realized. She could get up faster. She fell down too. She just got up faster than I did. So the Starbucks cup that Miriam mentioned that I was quoted on, it said, people fall down. Winners get up. But the gold medal winner is sometimes just the person who gets up the fastest. Being a superstar in today's world, where things change so quickly, technology changes, global change across borders. It's not about who never makes mistakes. It's not about who never falls down. It's about who builds the skill of getting up faster in today's world to really be a superstar. When I think about how many times I've had to pick myself up and start over even when I don't feel like it, one of my earliest memories is right after I had my leg amputated. I remember being in the hospital and recovering from the surgery and I had to do this therapy where they put a pile of books and a bathroom scale on the top. And my leg, so okay, so my real leg comes down to here. So I had to push on the end of my real leg on that bathroom scale to toughen up the nerve endings so that I'd be able to wear an artificial leg and stand on it. But when I first did it, I was six years old, I had just had my foot cut off and it hurt. I'm pushing on the scale and it hurt. And there was a nurse sitting next to me who would read the scale and say, Bonnie, three pounds is not enough. You're gonna have to push a little harder. Four pounds is not enough, push harder. And the tears were running down my face. I hated that nurse. I don't know, you know, when I think though, when I think back on it, I think about how much she loved me to sit there in my pain and my agony and keep pushing me because she wanted me 
to get up a little faster, right? She wanted me not to stay down, but to get up and start walking. I think if I was that nurse sitting with a little kid who just had her leg amputated and she was crying, I'd be like, cookie break. So sometimes the people in our lives who push us are such a gift to teach us how to get up a little faster than what we could do on our own. And I know sometimes you feel like that coach or that teacher or your parents is driving you crazy and you're crying and you hate them, but it's really a gift to teach you how to get up a little faster. But it's not just about physical things like a ski race or learning how to walk again. Getting up faster is so much about your feelings and your attitude. Like Patrick was talking about before we started the program, attitude is so important. So the skill for the future about falling down and getting up is really about who is good at turning around their attitude. How do you, can you change your own attitude when you're having a bad day? Because you know, you could have a relationship breakup, you could be struggling to do well in a class, things might not be going well at home. What do you do? How do you turn that around so you can come in the next day and start over with a more positive attitude? I know for me, when I was growing up, I thought that I had a really rough childhood. And I thought if I could just get that Harvard degree or if I could just go to the Olympics, after that my life would be great. I would never have any problems again. Well, you know what? It doesn't really work that way. That doesn't matter how many times I go on TV or how many books I've written, I still have tough times. I went through a divorce. I have, have my own business. And when the last downturn came, I had some really tough times when I was in a really bad mood, too. Has anybody studied CPR? Any, raise your hand if you studied CPR or first aid, even. More people first aid. A lot of people have. You study CPR or first aid because you want to be ready if somebody has an accident, if there's a problem. Well, in the same way, you can be ready to turn your attitude around if you think about it ahead and you, you get ready. So some things you could do, simple things, like you can make a playlist of music that would cheer you up, or the stuff you know that would cheer you up. You can look at the albums you have on Facebook and pick out the ones that make you laugh or remember a really good day and focus on that. Or at school, you can make sure you hang around the people who lift you up and make you smile versus the ones who complain all day long. You know, if you're having a bad day, just kind of stay away from those people. Because in the end, what makes the superstar of the future are the people who get good at being able to take charge of their attitude and be able to do CPR on your own attitude and make sure that you have a good day. So you can not only pick yourself up when you're down, but you can get up a little faster and win the gold. Thank you and have a great conference.